Okay. Money Church Live. Let's get it started. Text. Peace, family. What's good with you? Let's have some fun tonight. Do a little bit of empowering. I'm feeling good about this. You are? I am. I'm on right now. I'm just getting it. I didn't, God told me don't be late, so I don't want to I don't want to be late. Yeah, I'm getting in my bag. Uh let's see. Boom, boom, boom. Hold on. Peace family. Y'all stay on for one minute. Just bear with me for a second, please. I'm gonna post this. Uh, uh slow. boom. Cool. Queen Jada, can you put yellow behind here? You know how to do it? Yes, sir. Y'all give me one minute. Just stay on the live for a second. We're gonna get it cracking. Peace family. I'm here with Bishop Dean. He in the building. We're gonna get started as money church. Um Yeah, we just gonna we just gonna uh let this hate fuel us and what we doing with this movement. Like, so Queen Jade, I need you to put you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready too. I just need you to put this camera on the tripod and make sure we looking straight. Okay. Might have to move up a little bit, maybe. Ah. There we go. It's a money church Monday. Special edition. <laughs> Special edition. Let me help you out. You got it? I got it. Sure. Yeah, All right, you got new nails on everything. I don't want you to hurt mine. <laughs> All right, make sure we're even. I don't like crooked stuff. Make sure we got symmetry. I, I want to show you this while we're waiting. Yes, sir. Uh, I have quotes mm -hmm. that I take from everybody around me. Uh, known people, people around me, specific quotes. And I've been like recently, last week, I said, let me go back over all these quotes. You have quoted a couple of things, and there was one I wanted you to see. This is one of the ones that mm. came from you. I love that. And I just needed you to see what you... I, that's, that's, my, that's my vibe. You feel me? That's my vibe right now. So, so I just wanted you I to get that. that. So listen, yeah. let, let's hop into this. Let's <laughs> let me hop into this real quick. Yes, and, and sir. Let's get the business. So you like this look? It's a you, really interesting angle because it's like bubbled out. So it's showing more of the space. Yeah, is like it I good? Can, do you like this look? Yes or no? It's different. Do you like it? What do you mean is it different? I like it. I don't like how I was tilting down. It looks kind of funny. What's going on here? Like, why is it? Why is it not straight? Why is it not up? Because of the way the camera is. All uh, right. So, family. Um. Let me see. You showing me what it looked like? Yes. All right. Give me one second. Y'all stay tuned, please. It's just Monday. You don't. It's, it's Indigenous Day. You don't have that much going on. Hold one second. I have some things to say. You see how it's like bubbled out? Uh, all right. I can live with it. All right. Cool. Why don't we get a little closer then? Because you don't like, hey, let's get closer since it's bubbled out. You can, you can hear us better. You can see, still see us good, right? Yeah. Like you don't need our, I mean, you don't need my Crocs in it necessarily. Like, <laughs> be good. We good right there? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's better. Better like, you know what I mean? I don't got no haircut, but I'm handsome still. <laughs> God is good. All right, family. So let's get into, boom. So, bitch, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to them. Yes. Um, and make sure I get that print out too in a second, please. So I have, I've, I've experienced this. So ever since I've unified our people through group economics, mm -hmm. January 1st of 2018, mm -hmm. there's been an onslaught, a series of four years of smear campaigns, reputational attacks, character attacks, right? Mm -hmm. Newest one now is a gentleman from the white community who's being supported by the guy that I beat in defamation, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. biggest slanderer, mm -hmm. um, who's saying now the new thing is fake mogul, fake guru. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. I, honestly, my team tells me they get all frustrated. They send me these group texts. Somebody said something new about you. I don't have time to watch your videos. <laughs> like, I don't have time to watch somebody's YouTube video about me. Like I, I, I seriously don't. Right. And then I'm like, how are we going to respond? So it's like, well, do we do this produced video? Do we edit it in the receipts? Do you do like, listen... Uh, God just put on my spirit uh, through a series of things happening this weekend. Let me just address my haters. Excuse me. Pardon me. Edit that, please. Let me address our haters. Mm -hmm. This whole thing is bigger than me. Mm. 
Um, so I don't have all the bullet notes. My team told me a bunch, right? Uh, 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 I'm broke. I've been broke. I'm a fake mogul. Made two thousand dollars a month. Lived in some small house. Family. I could run down so many receipts that I'm not going to waste my time running down. Oh, I don't do real estate. I don't know real estate. Like, wow. Well, what I want to say is this. What bothers me most is don't discredit what my God did. Mm. Mm. Say you're wrong, but say you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the brokest, non-doing real estate, fake mogul there is. Yeah. Right? Say you're right. I'm a miracle then. Wow. Wow. If I was this man that had 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 no wealth, mm -hmm. never did all these real estate deals, never managed two mortgage companies, never been 10 years as a realtor, mm. never was the first man hired by prominent property Sotheby's International Realty, never was a real estate expert on NBC's Today Show, real estate expert. Say I was never any of that, never did any of the things that I, that I know I did. Mm -hmm. They're saying they can't find out my receipts. Mm. If people can, and from the outside in can't find out about my personal life, mm -hmm. about my private affairs, right. about how I run my business, the biggest part is I don't even care. I'm not talking mm -hmm. to you. Right. I'm not for you. I'm for the men and women who come from my background, my environment, the welfare kids, the high school dropouts, the three-time felons, those who can relate, the divorcees, those who filed bankruptcy, those who faced bankruptcy, those who've been in depression. See, the, the part for me is not my resume. Mm -hmm. Y'all can have my resume because my resume is his resume. Yeah. Not, you, you, you literally aren't even understanding me. Mm. You're right. I'm not a mogul. I'm a miracle. Wow. Come on. I'm not a guru. I'm a miracle. Mm. Like, I literally was 30 years old after making millions. You can dispute that, but me and the IRS know, and me and the folks around me know, all the folks I took care of know, but I don't even care about my resume. Wow. Like, take, you all care about money. Money is your God. Money is not my God. Wow. Money never made me. Come on. Says the man that was seen $100,000 at 17. First Rolex at 17 in high school, but take that away. That's my resume. I don't care about my resume. Mm. I can tout all the Cartiers, all the Hublots, all the videos they talked about me being broken. Every video you see, I got a watch that's worth $20,000 or more, but I don't care. Wow. I don't care. Y'all care. Mm. I care about the miracle. I care about the man that was depressed at 30 that went to church in Livingston, New Jersey, didn't know where he was going in life. After losing everything, and God spoke to me in a 2003 Dodge Intrepid I spent $3,500 for in Hattie Grace, Maryland from the car auction, and God said, take care of my people, and I'll take care of you. Come on. And I didn't know what that meant, take care of my people, I'll take care of you. Mm. I'm talking about the guy that went through the FBI investigation for 18 months, the SEC investigation for 18 months, the colostomy bag. For several months, the reversal surgery. I'm talking about that guy, that miracle. My God, hallelujah. You can't dispute I'm a three time felon. Come on. You can't dispute I'm a former high school dropout. You can't dispute I'm a welfare kid, but you can't dispute I'm a fund manager neither. Hallelujah. Not just any old fund manager, but one that innovated something that has never been done in our come community on, since on, 1921. On. You can't take this away from him. Yeah. See, when you try to, when God calls somebody and puts them on a route, puts them on a mission, and that person's obedient to that mission, when you try to undermine, when you try to undermine his servant, you're trying to undermine the one that sent him. Right, exactly. You can't take away my 65 corner classes in 34 inner cities. You didn't go to the hood of Chicago, I did. We did. You didn't teach in the rain on Madison and Pulaski in Chicago. We did. Mm. You didn't bring out 700 people on the Bronx, New York, on the courthouse steps in a corner class. We did. Mm. You didn't go to Murder Mac and Bewick in, in Detroit. 
We did. So, fine. Have it. You want to have it? Have the money. <laughs> have the resume. So, that makes me even more of a miracle. Yeah, that's good. If I didn't do any of the real estate you said I didn't do, haters, fans, really just fans, because you make videos about me, you think about me, I don't think about you. Yeah. While you're thinking about me, you're editing videos about me, I'm doing the work he sent me to do. Come on now. There's a difference between us. The difference between us is I have a plan. I wrote the plan out in my book, The Solution. If anybody wants that book for free, free download at mrjmorrison.com. Scroll down, you'll see my book, The Solution, how Africans in America achieve unity, justice, and repair. God gave me a plan for my people. Wow. How to get political unity, how to get economic unity and stimulation, and how to repair ourselves socially, king, queen. Mm. So while you talk about me and who I was 15 years ago, mm -hmm. so while you are looking to discredit me by who I was 15 years ago or 10 years ago or five years ago or five months ago, I'm going to continue to do the work that I was called to do, yeah. that I documented, that I blueprint, and I have a plan for our people. So have it, have the fake guru, have the fake mogul, but what you can't say is a fake servant though. Wow. What you can't say is he has fake work though. Come on. There's too much body of work that we've done for you to be able to discredit that we have a plan for our people and we're living out that plan in real life. Yeah. So listen, money is your thing. Money is your God. I don't care about the money. Don't like. I didn't have to get dressed for this. I don't got to wear no jewelry for this. I don't even. I, I couldn't even find my brush today. It don't even matter. Mm. Cause you see a man by his physical continence. Come on. My guy sees a man by his heart. I don't mind. Like I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm more. I'm a spiritual being in this physical flesh. Oh. Y'all low frequency. You low vibrations. You're so worried about what I did or didn't do. You haven't focused on what you've done. Mm. And what your purpose and your calling is to do. Come on. So I just wanted to give that for, for and speaking to, to my audience, my flock, if you will, my, my, my brothers and sisters, my supporters. They already ran this play on me for four years. Y'all can't get the same play. I'm not going to take my focus off the mission and what we got to do and get distracted by. Y'all did it to me so much, I know how to do it now. Wow. I know how to defend this play. Mm. Y'all ran this play on me for four years. You talking about the same bankruptcy, the same lawsuit that I settled, the same, 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 same. Mm. They're remixing and re recycling the same stuff, most of which is 10 plus years old yeah. to get me to try. Like, listen, we ain't not going to do that. Yeah. We got work to do. That's good. We got, we got, we got, we got like real work to do. We got community empowerment to do. We got Big Brothers Anonymous this Saturday empowering our youth ages 12 to 24. My Brother Keeper Alliance, Obama Foundation. We got political giants coming to the black house to lease our space. We have, we just got work to do. I don't even got, again, that's resume stuff. I don't even want to talk about resume. Yeah. Queen Jay, if I said paper, please. Yes, sir. I just want to read this to y'all and then we're going to build on spiritual stuff. I also want to do a Q and A. If anybody needs any money advice, financial advice, I want to build with you all, feed you tonight and give you financial advice. But I want to give you something that I read up on. I've been new about this. It's actually in my book, The Solution. Again, free book for you. Anybody that texts me in that text, 404-737-5751. Text me tonight. I'm going to send you guys, if you don't go to the website, I'll send you the PDF of my book. Um, it's easier through the website, though. Uh, but I want you to see what my plan is, what, what, what plan God gave me. Not my plan, his plan. Yes. What plan I have for our people. I'm just living out a plan. That's all. I'm not a mogul. Yes. I'm just a miracle. Come on. Doing God's work. Like, you're right. You're absolutely right. I'm not a mogul. Mm. Right. I've, I've, I've evolved. I have a better, I have a higher call, I have a higher title than that. That's good. We still stuck on titles. Like, what about work? What about, mm. what about food? But I want to give my, my supporters this, this education. Like, I like teaching moments. So the teaching moment in this for me is you, the devil's going to keep running the same playbook on you in your life as long as you let him win. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, the, if the reverse or the flea flicker continues to work against your team, I'm going to continue to run that play. Absolutely. Y'all can't stop my pick and roll. I'm going to continue to run a pick and roll. Right. So if Jay Morrison and his organization 
is we continue to get distracted and hype and all of that. Every time a new hater pops up, every year there's a new hater. Every quarter they introduce somebody new. New personality seeing the same things about me over and over and over again. Yeah. It's how distracted we won't, we won't, we're not falling for that again. Mm -hmm. But check this out. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover issued direct directives governing Cointelpro, all caps, Cointelpro, ordering FBI agents to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activities of movements and their leaders. In 1969, leaders of the Black Panther Party were targeted by Cointelpro and neutralized by being assassinated, imprisoned, publicly humiliated, or falsely charged with crimes, right? Cointelpro uh, is alleged to have been continued use, uh, using, using tactics like including discrediting targets through psychological warfare, smearing individual groups, mm. using forged documents by planting false reports in the media, now we got social media, mm. harassment, wrongful imprisonment, illegal violence, and assassination, or character assassination. 23 FBI offices were ordered to disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activities of black nationalist organizations. A March 1968 memo stated the program's goal was to prevent the coalition of a militia of black nationalist groups, to prevent the rise of a messiah who could unify the black militant nationalist movement. Dr. King was said to have the potential to be a messiah figure should he uh, abandon nonviolence uh, in, uh, integrationism. And Kwame Ture was noted to have the necessary charisma to be a real threat in that way, as he was portrayed as someone who exposed a much more militant vision of black power. Real quick, uh, infiltration. Agents and informers did not merely spy on political activists. Their main purpose was to discredit, disrupt, and negatively direct action, redirect action. So are we trying to give you action to unify yeah. 15,000 families, to build larger funds, to build more group economics? There's counterparts out here or here to redirect those actions. Don't do that, they said. Yes. The very presence, their very presence served to undermine trust and scare, uh, and, oh, excuse me, to undermine trust and scare of potential supporters. Let me say this again. The very presence of these infiltrators was served to undermine the trust and to scare off potential supporters. The FBI and police exploited this fear to smear genuine activists as agents. Mm. Old playbook. Um, there's another piece I want to read real quick. I just wanted to give you guys this. It was in my spirit. And we get some money church and some financial game and all so of that. Good. But your playbook, like, we off that. We over it. Um, here we go. The intended effect of the FBI's Corintel Pro was to expose, disrupt, misdirect, or otherwise neutralize these groups, right? One, create a negative public enemy, excuse me, create a negative public image for target groups. For example, through surveillance, surveilling activists, then releasing negative personal information to the public. Break down internal organization by creating conflicts. For example, by having agents uh, exasperate racial tensions or send anonymous letters to create conflicts. Mm -hmm. Create dissensions between groups. For example, by smearing rumors that other groups were stealing money. Restrict access to public resources. For example, uh, pressuring nonprofit organizations to cut off funding through materials. Uh, restrict the ability to organize and protest. Restrict the, uh, the ability of individuals to participate in group activities. Example, by character assassination, false arrest, and surveillance. My point being is the work we own is, is, is legendary work. The work we're on is servant work. The work we're on is revolutionary work. Yes. So if you're going to use titles for me, use miracle, mm. use revolutionary. We've already been through 18 months of FBI investigation. We've been through 18 months of SEC investigation and DOJ investigation, Department of Justice. We've been through two years of smear and defamation in which we also won our defamation. 
which I said we would from the beginning. I said that God was going to fight my battles, and yes, yeah. that he did. I said that in my office upstairs, and I'll play that video. My point is, y'all can have it. Have the reputation, have the character attacks, have the smear. But what you can't have is this miracle. Mm. You can't have that. My life today, everything I've been through, everything I survived, everything I've endured, everything that God's grace, his favor on me, that he imparted, yes. has been every bit of a miracle. You're not going to dilute that miracle. You're not going to have somebody else thinking that Jay Morrison's life was any less called by God, was Come any on. less uh, the favor of God, was any, it was any less a true calling of a man with a true heart Thank for God. the people because of some YouTube videos you want to splice up and dice up and not offer us any solutions, any direction, and any body of work. All you're doing is scaring people and redirecting them from working with me and offering them nothing in return. Wow. But maybe some paid for courses that benefit you. We know this play. Y'all can't get this play any longer. So I don't gotta like, we don't gotta spend no more time on it. We don't gotta like, we don't gotta do fancy videos. I don't got time to re-edit your videos. I don't got time to watch your videos. Mm. We got work to do. And so That's good. with that, uh, if you have question and answers tonight, not about no like rumor hearsay, like listen, if you believe me, I've been a hundred since day one. If you believe me and real recognize real and you see me, you see me. If you don't see me, you don't believe me, and you believe them, you see them. Rock out. Follow their leadership. Don't follow my leadership. Yes. It's okay. I'm not for you. And that's okay at this point in time. Like, it's all right. But we're not going to diminish God's work, his blessings, his grace. Me as a miracle, like, we're not going to do that. But if you have questions on finance, on money, how you could be a miracle, how do yes. you bounce back from hardship and adversity, Mentally, the, the, the strategic decisions that, we, that we've that we done. All of that, I'm happy to pour in, so see, and serve you tonight mm -hmm. with some financial game and financial information. But we're not going to allow nobodies who have do not have any direction for us, any solutions for us, don't have any... The, the frequency is not even operating at the same frequency. They don't, like, we're, we're, we're not going to allow that to distract us and continue to run that play any longer. Like, that's old school. Like, y'all know what I'm about. I'll show you what I'm about. Like, I'm here at the Black House. Yeah. Doing what I said, said I was going to do from the very beginning. Amen. Doing what God called me to do from the very beginning. Taking care of his people. Taking care of, like, like this is what we own. So, Bishop, any wow. thoughts on that? Wow. Hallelujah. Uh, first of all, man, fantastic um, level of transparency. Uh, your, your, your testimony, again, the information from the past to the present. And, uh, and the reality is what you're dealing with tonight is what all elevated leaders have to deal with. Facts. Uh, the, the reality is it goes back to a statement I heard uh, from a bishop, Bishop J.O. Patterson, Churches of God in Christ, many years ago before he died. He, uh, he asked God once, he said, God, he said, why is it that everybody stabs me in my back? And the Lord's response to him was, you in front of him. He said, <laughs> where else are they supposed to stab you? You in front. <laughs> and so the reality is just that whenever God elevates you, there's going to be a level of conflict, a level of uh, conflict of opinions, um, there's going to be forms of attack that come at you. It comes with the territory and the grace of God that we allow to be upon us will help us get through these times of attack, these times of onslaught, because at the end of the day, when you look back over the shoulder of your life and you see the successes mm -hmm. that God brought you through, your successes prophesy to your future. You know what God just shared with me, though? He said, in this realm, in these level of attacks, I'm no longer giving you my grace. Mm -hmm. I need to give you my wisdom. Yeah, amen. He's already given me grace. That's good. Now it's, how okay, how are you going to deal with this? That's good, and it's true. It's about wisdom at this point. Yes, sir. And the wisdom says, and it just spoke to me today, it was one, um, someone spoke to me at, a, at an event we had, this, this uh, 
a big polo classic we had uh, leased out here with Miguel Wilson at our black house. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, it was, it was lit. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the gentlemen said, he said, oh, they beating you up out there. They beating you up online. He said, I watch it. He said, I support you. He said, you know what? And you started getting quieter and quieter. He said, you better get out there and be bold. Mm. He said, you, you have let their noise silence you. That's exactly what it intended to do. Mm. To reduce my boldness. Wow. And God spoke to me in that. And that was all part of the play. Mm. Mm. As long as I'm distracted, as long as I'm on my, on my back foot, as long as I'm defensive, as long as I'm trying to figure out, well, what's the high role? What should I say? How should I say? It? Is it politically correct? As long as I'm doing that, the enemy is winning. Gotcha. Gotcha. At the end of the day, it, right now, it, it, it's about wisdom. These attacks aren't going to stop. Like, because I did this video, it's not going right. to stop. And have a new video tomorrow about this video. Right. But it's about the wisdom, it's about the focus of not making the same mistakes twice mm -hmm. or three or four times as the same play is being run. So all it is to disrupt and all that, but also to distract you. Yeah, that's, that's true. And one of the acts of wisdom that I would, I would accompany with the subject of wisdom is... You are likened unto a financial pastor. Mm. Let's say it this way. You, you are likened unto a financial shepherd. For sure. You've been given a level of knowledge, grace, wisdom to help direct uh, people in the area of finance, wealth, success, and very many, many ways. However, as... A financial pastor, this is what I want you to remember. Tell me. Feed the sheep and starve the goats to death. Mm. The ones who are feeding off of what you're saying, the ones who are attuned to what you're saying, the ones who are really truly listening to the food that you're giving. If you stay so focused on feeding the sheep, yes, you can starve the goats to death. Give me your handshake, please. Yes, Let sir. Let me tell you, that was the other word I got tonight. That's why I said I want to feed them tonight. Mm. I got that word earlier today. That's it. And what God, what God shared with me, actually, no, I got that word yesterday. Watching Pastor Lovey, uh, Elias, Elias, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what God shared with me was, that's my ministry. You're right. Like, Money Church is great as a Bible study almost, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but my ministry is the gift of financial interpretation Yes, to those who are least amongst us. That's yes, what sir. God shared with me. Yes, sir. My job is to serve those least amongst us, those sick, those poor, those in prison. Yes. That's why we went around the corner of these corner classes. That's why I taught Inmate the Real Estate on Rikers Island. That's why I give back to our youth, right? And so that's what tonight's going to be about and where I want to evolve Money Church to is us doing this, mm -hmm. adding spiritual context, adding word, adding, a, a, adding all God's love into the equation, right. but teaching. That's it. And giving finance and, mar and, and money gain. Absolutely. That, that, that's, my, that's my pastor. That's, that's my purpose. ministry. Exactly. And so I got to do more, to your point, I have to do more of that. Yes. More of that ministry in every single way and the rest will take care of itself. That's it. Because if the goats are able to distract your ability to just feed, just feed, mm -hmm. then they've already accomplished to a certain degree their effort to disrupt. Correct. You're well, now feeding less and I'm responding more. Exactly. Exactly. So, so even as a result of us knowing that these efforts of adversaries are going to continue because... As you're consistently being elevated, it's to be expected. However, this is what I want to say to those of you who may be listening to both sides. You're listening to the information, the knowledge, the experience, the truth coming from King Jay, but you're also listening to those who are speaking their own thoughts, their own opinions, their own lies in many cases. That being the case, this is what I want to say to you. There's a verse of scripture that Jesus speaks to his disciples, and he says this, be careful at what you hear in the ear. Be careful at what you hear in the ear. 
Now, he's not talking about your physical ears because you can go through the mall and hear music. You can be on your front porch and hear mm -hmm. somebody talking beside you at a next door neighbor. You, you're not talking about physical ears. He's talking about what you give access to as it pertains to your spiritual ear, your solical ear, the ear of your mind, the mm -hmm. ear of your soul, your spirit. Be careful at what you let enter in to your ear because what you let enter into your ear, watch this now, will increase your faith no matter what you're believing for. Mm -hmm. So if, if I allow a lie to get into my ear, it will increase my faith in false doctrine. It will increase my faith in, in apostasy. It will increase my faith as relates to that man and that woman being considered evil in my eyes. But if I keep my ear open to that which is true, that which is right, that which is pure, then it will increase my faith mm -hmm. in those very same areas. And this is ultimately where God is testing all of us. Can you serve as a gatesman to your ear. Your ear is a gate. Your eyes are a gate. Your mouth is a gate. There are certain parts to your soul that are gates. Your ear is one of them. And you have to be careful no matter what it is. You can, listen, there have been times where I'm sure we all have received false information, uh, whether it was politically whether it was financially, economic said this, the doctor might have gave you a report and gave you a report that wasn't even true. But then you found out later on that it was a false report. Watch this now. You got to be careful as to what you let into your ear because it can depress you, oppress you, confuse you. It can bring you into a place of where you are disabled where you're no longer operating effectively in that which God has called you to operate in. Why? Because you allowed a, a imp, you allowed a, a seed of negativity to get in. And once it gets in, it can disrupt your whole element of faith, your whole element of focus. So I say that as a word of, of warning, as a word to awaken us that it is your responsibility to be the guardsman over your ear gate and make sure you actually run the proof. Do the research before you believe what everybody else says, because even that can, can literally become a terrorism to your own future. Mm. And I say, like, I don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, I'm, I'm, that's the point, is that the way people edit, pull together information, the research may appear that what they say has some legitimacy. I can't, I don't have time to argue back and forth with people that don't know me. Yeah. Right? Like, and, and I say, consider the heart of the source. Yes. Consider the heart of the source. What's their, what's their heart? What's their objective? What frequency are they on? But if they are right about me and somehow, I've, somehow magically I've attained all this wealth of knowledge mm. that has allowed me to educate over 500,000 students, creating millionaires off my tree. Mm. And I have not done the things I said I've done and have brought together more families than P. Diddy, than Jay-Z, than mm. Oprah, than uh, Don Peebles, than anyone you can name. Through God's grace, it brought together more black families mm. to practice group economics more than anybody in history. Wow. And I've not done any of the things as they claim that I've said that, that I've said I've done, that I know I've done. That is the biggest miracle ever. Wow. Amen. It's the like to have the knowledge base to get through an entire SEC qualification, mm. SEC five. Man, there must be a special spirit over me. <laughs> To have no real estate knowledge, no real estate accomplishments, no business accomplishments, no acumen, no history in this business, but to but 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 to complete an SEC qualification, an application as a three-time felon with a bankruptcy and everything else, mm. and then pull that off to the largest capital raise that we've seen in American history by a black-owned company. Yes, sir. That is a miracle then. So if if, if you must believe then believe, I don't care. Mm -hmm. All I care about is where are we going? Where are we moving forward to? Let's do the work. Yes. Y'all 
stuck on yesterday. I'm trying to get us to a new future. To a less oppressed people. Yes. What are we on right now? So anyway, I want to get to feeding. So you guys can ask questions, but I prefer if you request me in the chat. I'm going to flip this camera real quick. I want to get into financial advice. That's Queen Jada over there. Ha. I want to get into financial advice. Let's feed, let's eat. Um. Yep. Yeah, block them. Oh, okay, that's all good. So you want to request, let's tap in. Daniel Dickey, what up, King? We just money churching. Um, any requests we want to get into financial advice, money advice, uh, anything at here off the farms. What up, King? Brother Brother Farrakhan, peace, King. Love. So we taking on any financial advice, any requests, man. I just want to feed the, feed the folks. Let's see real quick. How do I do this? All right, no requests in the chat. Anything uh, business, LLC, real estate, credit, finance, any game anybody wants to get, let's tap into it. That's what I'm here to serve. That's what I've been serving since 2012. Ever since February 10th, 2012, Carteret High School, I educated 450 kids, hip-hop to homeowners. And since then, I've never stopped. Yes. I've never stopped pouring into communities since February 10th, 2012. I'm going to follow my calling. And that was coming out of bankruptcy. That was coming, that was broke. That was coming off being a millionaire. That was all of that. Straight miracle. Uh, no, I don't see the questions. Give me the questions. I don't see them. Hey, the oh, in the comments? What's, Tell me. What's your take on LLCs? I'm trying to open my own laundry service. Point me in the right direction. All right. My take on LLCs. Uh, we teach it in our business mastery program. I believe in the umbrella company first for your LLC, a holdings company. You Like... Your LLC should represent you, the person. And then from that umbrella LLC, you then will create your laundry company LLC. Your laundry company LLC will be owned by your holding company LLC. It does not need to be called holding company. It could be Dean and Morrison Group. It could be called Dean and Morrison Enterprise. But Dean and Morrison Enterprise is now going to own Dean and Morrison Real Estate Group, Dean and Morrison Laundry Group, yeah. Dean and Morrison Trucking. And we do that because what you're creating is called a corporate veil. Right, you create a strong corporate veil, which allows you protections. It also allows you better tax mitigation strategies, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we teach that in our business mastery, our real estate roadmap. But that's a, a great verbal version I can give you outside of being on the whiteboard. Next Money Church will bring the whiteboard out and give you that game. But I believe in a limited liability company, and I believe that if you are a single member LLC or even in partnership, if you are the visionary of the LLC, the quarterback, the maestro, the syndicator that it should be a uh, manager-managed LLC, not a member-managed LLC, right? Because you're the manager, you want to be able to control your entity and the vision you have for that entity. What else we got, Queen Jada? Um, this question is from there. Are real estate interest rates going up this year, down this year or up? Interest rates are 100% going up this year, um, as we see them creeping up. They have to go up in order for the inflation rate to balance out. So what's going to happen is as interest rates go up, banks tighten up, they lend less. That means there's less buyers in the market. When there's less buyers in the market, that means less demand. When there's less demand, sellers have to lower their prices to make their real estate more attractive to the limited buyers that are in the market. That's what we call a buyer's market. Properties go on sale. So many of us are anticipating this sale of properties and our opportunity to continue to build wealth. Somebody said, who's this? I'm gonna bring somebody on real quick. Let's get to the feeding, man. This is the part I love. Peace. Yeah. All right, just a question. Yeah, hi, it's Mark. Great. Thanks for your guidance and everything. I just wanted to confirm, um, does it, does it, is there a threshold before opening up an LLC before you do that? Or does it make to stay, to stay sole proprietorship first? Because I got some input that you want to make a certain amount of money before you do the LLC because of all the accounting work and things of that nature. You definitely, no, 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 no. Um, you want to start your LLC off the top. Uh, different states do have different filing fees. And I think California is probably one of the most expensive, California and New York. But um, if you're serious about business, um, you want to have your, your, your company set up, 
Uh, you do want to have some kind of bookkeeper if you can. A good bookkeeper is about $50 an hour for, for a decent bookkeeper. Um, that's only when you start obviously bringing in a certain amount of revenue, right? When you've got a lot of activity, yeah. you want to be able to account for those books. Um, and your bookkeeper will work with your accountant to make sure your accountant reports your, your revenue. But um, you want to have that LLC. You want to get your EIN number, your tax ID number, which is like your LLC social security number. So you want to get that as well. You want to make sure you get at least a virtual address for your business. Uh, we yes. have here at our, our building, Shameless Plug Legacy Center, but you can get them, you know, wherever. Um, and you want to legitimize your business for tax, uh, for legitimacy, for corporate veil, for litigation protection, but you also want to do it for presence and perception and posture and positioning. Okay. Right? To do business, you want to have a business. Yes. So proprietor is like a business, but all liabilities on you is very informal and it doesn't say to a business partner or to a lender or to a customer that you are at that next level of doing business. Definitely. So I have an online business as well as two properties. Based on your input, I'm feeling tempted to the next property I get, do it through a corporation. But I hear discussions whether it should be a corporation or a trust. I'm in Toronto right now, so the laws are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But I'm hearing discussions about putting the property underneath the trust rather than through the corporation. I'm just, just curious about the differences. Yes, I like, I always advocate for a trust, right? It's more complexities to a trust and okay. it's harder to get financing under a trust. Even when you get financing under a trust, the trust has to own the LLC. Okay, gotcha. So, right? And, and here's the thing, I'm not telling you what I read in the book, this is what I actually have, have done. Yeah. Gotcha, so, gotcha, yeah. So, no one actually owns their real estate directly in a trust. Your trust okay. owns an LLC, right? And you'd okay. be the you'd be the uh, the trustee of that trust, likely, or the manager of that LLC, or trust me, the manager of the LLC. And the LLC would own the real estate. But now, when you're getting financing, the bank still want to see who's the person behind all this. Exactly. So you may have to be the personal guarantor. So there, there's some ways we know how to set that up. So there's any way that we can help you. And, and coaching or mentorship or whatever, please let us know, DM me or hit our site. But um, you can set all that up. But um, I would just, um, I personally don't like the company side. I like, not, not the company, the corporation side. I think yeah. LLCs are cheaper. They're cheaper okay. to maintain. They give you all the same protections. They give you flexibility of the tax reporting. Um, so I wouldn't go into any kind of corporation. I would stay in an LLC limited liability company. Owned by uh, okay. by trust. Yeah, so I took I took your online course, like the 24 classes that you have there. So it was really good taking that. Really helpful. And you went into that the, the LLC. If I have a business, like an online business, it should be set I should have an LLC for the business and then an LLC for the real estate. Should be separate, right? What's the challenge with mixing? Well, tell me this. And as you make money and have more influence and success, right? Yeah. If one of your students is mad at you in your online course. Oh, yeah. And your gotcha. online course, LLC, is the same one as your other business and your laundry business and your real estate business. And then they want to sue you. Yeah. You tell me what's the problem with having all your assets under one LLC. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Business gotcha. partnerships, funding. Yeah. If you get yeah. funding for that, right? So yeah. you want to separate those, what's called SPEs. Special yeah. purpose entities, their own individual LLCs, and those should flow up to your holding company, and then that should be flow up to you. Got it, got it. Okay, thank you so much. I'm not even interested in getting any more real estate with this in these mortgage interest rates, and I want to make sure I get like the LLC and trust before I buy another property. Awesome. Thank you. Shout thank you so you. much. My pleasure. Take care. Take Love care. from the fake guru. <laughs> don't watch that. I don't pay attention to that, man. All right. Listen, I, listen, I don't even know how I know all this stuff. I, I don't even know how I know all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just, it just, it's natural. When, it, when it's a calling, it's a calling, right? That's a fact. When you have your calling, you have your calling, man. Love Blessings you. anyway. Much respect, man. Yes, sir. And you know they're going to come at you, right? No matter what. You become a threat, right? As soon as what you're doing. So they're going to come after you no matter. You, gotta, you just got to respect that, right? I respect I just, it. I just think we need to be more decentralized because anytime we build up something centralized, it gets attacked. So it seems like we got to do things more decentralized where you can't really drop a bomb on it, if you get what I mean. Yeah, more leaders, more systems, more process, all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah not one leader that they can hit at, right? So well, listen, 
Jesus earned his stripes, and I'm going to earn mine. Exactly. Respect. Respect. All right. Take care. Bless him. One. All right. Let's see. We're taking all questions. Just, just, just feed in real quick on Money Church. And, and Bishop, as you, as you see any spiritual elements to any of this, yeah. any, any word reference, we're going we gonna, to we gonna weave it in like we always do. Absolutely. Um, so feel free to hop in and double dutch with me. Yes, sir. Uh, take on this for right here. Let's see. Love people. Just give us some game. Taking on all questions. Just live Q&A. Peace, King. Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, how you doing, Jay, man? I, I don't know how this becomes a topic and everything, man. I want to give you your flowers, man. You inspired me and a lot of young people that's uh, around me in, in this area from Texas to Atlanta to all over the world, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate and, you, uh, One of the questions I got is as a real... And, and uh, I'm, you yeah, know, yeah, I yeah, yeah, followed Yes, sir, in Texas. Okay. And, uh, you know, I followed your class, and I got my LLC, holding company LLC. Uh, but, and I have a lot of emails sent to me as if I can buy it or wholesale it or whatever. Uh, I'm getting a lot of wholesale activity, like, you know, from wholesalers. So how can I put two and two together, like closing those deals as a realtor? Should I use the one pay contract to to send to my buyers or should I just uh or is it legal to even just or is it or there's a way to put it under contract to where I can get the three percent or the six percent so the first thing I think is if wholesalers are sending you deals opportunities that yeah. make sense for your buyers I would disclose immediately to the wholesale wholesaler that look I have buyers on deck. They're pre-qualified. They're ready, willing, and able. Um, I'm representing them. And, at, and so I would want to make sure that you get some equivalent to your 3% or whatever percent of that, right, interest for – because you because you know like, the sellers pay the commission, right? Yeah, yeah. So in this case, they're contracting the property from the seller yeah. and trying to assign it to you. Yes, sir. So that's all a matter of just negotiation, right? Okay. So the thing is, if you accept a commission as a wholesaler or a co a joint venture or a co-wholesaler, just make sure it's disclosed to your broker or that you're taking off your realtor hat and you're putting on your investor hat and oh. your client is okay with that, it's disclosed and signed. So I would tell my client, hey, listen, for this particular deal, I can find you what you want, but I can't do it representing you as your real estate agent because there's not a commission on the other side. And it's a private investor transaction, but I can represent you as an investor party. And then you can actually wear that investor hat, right, as an agent. As long as it's disclosed, you don't get in any trouble or have any compliance issue. So you okay. make sure your client is aware. And if you're doing anything, wherever you receive income as a commission, make sure your broker is aware. But, you know, as a real estate agent, you can do your own investor deals so that would be a private transaction outside of your broker outside your broker as an investor okay my thing of it is is that you know i will be playing the part as like a uh as a wholesaler you know what i mean like i get i can tell somebody i have these deals but i don't know who exactly would accept it you know on the buyer's end until they look at it and make an offer and then if that buyer wants to accept that offer then it's, that's when I negotiate. Of you see what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, no, nah, you know, you don't negotiate with your buyer. You negotiate with the wholesaler. Okay. So you tell the wholesaler, "I got a potential buyer for you." Okay. How much of this wholesale fee are you willing to split? Okay, I got you. I got. That's you. your negotiation. So now when you go to your buyer, they can negotiate, do what they got to do, and you're getting paid not from your buyer. Your buyer will put up a deposit for the wholesale fee, but you're getting paid from the wholesale from from the joint venture wholesale. But remember, likely that uh, unless there's a, a, a double closing, right, transactional funding double closing, yeah. your buyer is, is, is paying for the assignment of that contract. That's why I'm saying you got to make sure I, I, if you're yeah. telling your buyer to pay for this contract, you got to let your buyer know I'm eating off this contract too. That's yeah. part of my commission and that's part of the deal. So your buyer never goes back to you and say, 
hey, he brought me this deal. He never told me he was getting paid on the other side. Yeah. Right. So so do so do I do I put the joint venture contract as a, as a joint yes. venture or do yes I just go ahead and do venture, the it'll be a joint venture between you and the other wholesaler and you will get a disclosure document signed from your buyer that they are aware that you are getting paid a fee as a private investor joint venture with another investor. Okay, a disclosure. I appreciate it, Jay. Yes, sir. All love, King. Like that hat too. Oh yeah, stay blessed. Peace. <laughs> All right, you got to log off. I don't know how to log you off. You yeah, I'm trying to log <laughs> off. Man. I don't know. You might have to sign out. I ain't figured it out yet. It's been 10 weeks. I ain't figured it out. Ain't nobody put me on to that. But just something I want to add to yes, what sir. you've been doing tonight for everybody who's been listening to the questions and the answers and the experience that has come through you, uh, not only just information, but your past experiences. This is a very powerful proverb I want to submit. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Let's go. It says, buy the truth and sell it not. Mm. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Mm. The greatest man known for wisdom in the earth, other Solomon. than Jesus Christ himself, Solomon, is declaring when you find someone who's speaking truth to you, over a matter, over an industry, over a system, who's speaking truth to you, the Bible says buy it. Mm. Buy truth. That means invest in it. Mm. I heard a couple of the dear brothers coming on tonight, and I'm loving the fact that they said, I've already taken part of your classes. I've already been a part of your classes. And I would encourage you all, not just you two brothers, but anyone else that's listening, invest in the knowledge, the truth, the wisdom that we're reading about tonight as a relation by the truth and sell it not. Don't let anybody rob you of the truth that you know has worked for you. <laughs> if you've already received truth from King Morrison, you've received the actual knowledge and the academics and the acumen that has come through these classes, and you know it's worked for you, you, you certainly ought to be the greatest defenders of this mm -hmm. movement because you, you are literally the fruit of his seed. You're the harvest behind his seed. So once you invest it in yourself, his books, the various things that he's yet doing, I would encourage you to get all of what he has been offering. And when you do that, not just truth, don't forget, the Bible says also wisdom, by wisdom. Mm -hmm. Then it says by instruction and by understanding. Whatever you have to do to make sure you are put in a position where you can receive <laughs> from those who are above you through their knowledge, through their experience, through their longevity. If they're above you, be sure, humble yourself and invest in yourself more so than anybody else. If you don't invest in yourself, why should anybody else invest in you? So take what you have, even the little you may have, or even the capacity you may have, but do that, and when you can borrow it from someone like him, and you can buy it from someone like him who's been there, done that, I promise you, I know the fruit that follows your works will be great as, great as is, and even greater based on what he wants for you. Absolutely. You know what? I look at it as, like, I, you know, I buy accountants, I buy bookkeepers, mm. I buy specialists in real estate, I buy coaches, I buy business coaches, I buy marketing. I buy advertising specialists, advertising coaches, mentors, advisors. I'm buying time. Wow. When I buy somebody's expertise, I'm buying time. Come on. I don't got time to learn this stuff. Yeah. I buy an IT guy. I, I, I buy a front desk person. I buy, I buy a cleaning company because I don't got time to do yeah. it. It's good. That's I'm buying good. somebody's hours. I'm buying somebody's wisdom. I'm buying somebody's understanding. So it ain't just you buy like we buy. Listen, and not only that, there's a secret um, that that the Jews live by. It's one of, one of their cultural secrets, and it is this. They have learned to employ people who operate in fields that they're not professional in. And when they do it, they buy them to not only make sure they are put in a position where they're feeding other people's families by buying them, but at the same time, it allows them to stay in their place of specialty mm. so they can continue to invest in the thing that they're most specialized in 
while they allow other people who are gifted in other areas to be employed by them. So not only are they empowering the social community with the economics that they're, they're giving to them and distributing to them, but it puts them in a position to stay focused in their specialized area, and it's a win-win. That's a fact. Keep that currency flowing, too. Uh, Queen Jada, any questions coming through? Let me know. Somebody just asked an invite, too. Let's see. And we're taking your questions in the chat. I see the Q&A here, too. Hit that Q&A. Uh, you got that on my page or something on my page? I think so. Oh, I got to look at the Q&A. Just taking on some questions. We're just feeding the people. We'll be, we'll be off about 8 o'clock. I just want to money church. We're going to get in some live Q&As every Monday. Uh, imparting. Are you still doing mentorship? Yeah, we're still doing mentorship. You guys can check out uh, roadmapprogram.com for mentorship. Um, I, I, I do some scarce one-on-ones for high-level performers, those looking to scale to the next level. You can go to jmorrisoncoaching.com. That's jmorrisoncoaching.com. But um, again, I just, you know, I love imparting this wisdom. Uh, so we'll take any last questions before we dip. Somebody said, Jay, oh, yeah, you do a mentorship. Somebody said, oh. Uh, so we'll see if any, let me see my Q&A real quick. I can't read this. What's it say? I have 100K. What should I do with it? Let's talk about that. So I had a, uh, I had a potential coaching client who I'll be meeting with who has a million dollars in the bank. He came to me because he's losing, right? He's winning. He got a mill. Yeah. He's winning, but he's losing. Yeah, right. If you got a million sitting in the bank, you're losing. <laughs> wow, wow. If you got 100,000 sitting in the bank, you're losing. But no, literally, you're losing because um, you're likely earning 1% to 2% a year, probably right. less than 2% uh, ROI on your money, and the inflation rate is 8%. Right. So that means you're losing 7% a year on $100,000. That's seven grand a year. So your $100,000 is really worth, really worth $93,000. Mm. So you got 100 grand in the bank, a.k.a. you have $93,000 $93, in the bank. Wow. So what should you do with it? You Now, I don't know enough about your... Uh, rest of your finances, what job you have, your, your, your risk threshold, you know, all those different things I would need to know to tell you what to really do with it. But what I would do is I would get the money out of a bank that's earning me less than the inflation rate. And I will look to put my money to work in areas where I'm at least breaking even or beating the inflation rate. And, and specifically in vehicles that are doing better, if not beating it, getting closer to the inflation, you know, getting closer to beating inflation rate, and it's still liquid, which is why I like dumping my extra cash into my life insurance cash reserves. Because in my life insurance cash reserves, right. um, I was earning 9.75%. Now I'm like, like 3%, but, you know, it averages out, but I'm beating the bank. Yes. And I still could tap into it. It's still protected. It increases my death benefit to my heirs for when I go, and hopefully that's a long time from now. So I just... The money game is all about opportunity cost of money. We teach it in our, in our school. And it's all about making your money or parking your money in places where it makes greater returns for you than where it's currently at. That's everybody's game. Right. 100,000 there, 10,000 there, millionaire, 10 millionaire, decamillionaire. It's about how can I park this capital? It's not about keeping the money and screenshotting it and showing it on Instagram. It's about putting the money to work in places that it can work for you greater than where it's at. Work for you in tax benefits, work for you in cash flow and ROI, work for you in IRR, turn rate of return, work for you in equity and appreciation. That's what we own. Mm. I'm trying for again, somebody tried to hop on it didn't work. We'll see if he can take this. And again, all I'm on, listen, to the title of this, you know, title tonight's live for my haters, all of that, is just don't discount my miracle. Mm. Right? Because my miracle is his miracle. Yes. Peace. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How you doing, Queen? You You're breaking up a little bit. I do. Hello. It's spotty, though. Hello? Hello, hello? Can y'all hear me? Good afternoon. Ah, uh, now we question. can. That's better. That's better. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have a quick question. Right now, I have a child care center. And we're expanding. We're becoming a bigger child care center. And we're under our LLC. Well, after we open that, we're also going to open a skating rink. But my question is, they wanted me to add a 
501c3 in the equation. Well, I wanted mm-hmm. to do that. However, they want that to be the parent of the child care center. What do y'all think about that? Who is they? Well, what I, what I have is I have a financial team, and we come together, and we're working on bu- building the new building. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we have a financial team, and they kind of wanted me to go toward a organization that has like a um, a full, I guess you can say a full um, chairman. And then they would be the ones to appoint different people in different areas. However, right. they, they want you to have a board. Yes, a full board. Mm-hmm. However, I'm a little, I, I'm a little uneasy about that. And I'm gonna tell you why, because I built this company I'm about to ask you, you're the owner of the current LLC. I am. I'm the owner of the current LLC. Are you the sole owner? I am. Um, if you don't mind sharing, uh, what's your gross revenue annually? As of right now, our gross revenue is like at two hundred thousand. But Nothing before t- compared before expenses. Yes, before expenses. Gotcha. Um and. You guys want to start a skating ring, but they want a 501c3 with a board that takes away your control to then control your for-profit that you built right. in the company. Right. Um, why, why does the skating, from what they told you, why does is, why is the, the for-profit need to be under the nonprofit. I don't get it. Okay, what's happening is we have a becoming like a foster care unit. So what I'll be doing is essentially I do have a contract with the state and I'm, I'm here in Alabama. I have a contract with the state of Alabama. Mm-hmm. So like when they take children out of the home in the middle of the night, they come to me, to my center to say, maybe a day or two until they find a placement. So they wanted me to think about becoming a 501c3 just for that, that hall, which is going to be, it's going to be called the Arrington Hall, which is fine. That's great. However, they want to control the full, the full LLC. And I just don't, I'm a little uneasy about that. Yeah, I, I, I would be too. Um, I feel more comfortable about you maybe with this new vertical, this new arm of the business, the hall, that being maybe under a, um, a, a nonprofit and you being on the board or being a, a, a CEO of that nonprofit. Um, you can structure an agreement as a CEO where you have a certain amount of years that even if they were to remove you, you still got to get paid or that you would maintain okay. a certain kind of say-so. Um, I would not, however, uh, roll up my current revenue-producing business just just into that. Um, right. Yeah, I, I don't really see too much a- a advantage to do that. They could be sister companies. They could be aligned. There could even okay. be licensing agreements, or um, there could be even a profit share agreement if it <coughs> needs to show revenue. But but I I I I keep that asset for the family, and then allow the other verticals to work through the nonprofit, and kind of work that way. Okay, sounds good. Listen, I'm gonna just go ahead and sign up for your mentoring courses because it's a lot for me to take in right now. However, I am hands on and and I'm also visual. That's the type of learner I am, and I don't mind paying for what I need. Understand. So for everybody on this call, if you want to do a one-on-one Zoom with me or a one-on-one here at the Black House, it's jmorrisoncoaching.com. Okay. And if you want to do join our mastermind group for real estate and business, that's that's roadmapprogram.com. It's a real estate roadmap. It's roadmapprogram.com. And you'll be part of our mastermind community where we give all kinds of resources as well. So whatever fits you and floats your boat, but I, I love to add value where I can. Thank you so much. I just wanted to also uh, add an addendum 
to what King Jay has said. Um, I, I heard you mention deep down on the inside, you weren't quite comfortable, which is a sign that oftentimes God speaks to you through discernment. Facts. Right. So the very fact that you called tonight, you called because you felt a certain grievance, a certain disagreeable, you know, element within you because you had a discernment letting you know there was a lack of peace. Mm. But, but right. you know when you hear truth because truth will give you peace. So That's what right. you're hearing tonight through King Jay by way of his perspective and his, his experience and even his direction, that should be a sign to you that when you leave this phone call and you have a certain level of peace on the inside of you, it's a sign that God is talking to you directly as well. Awesome. You are absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't, I knew I wasn't steered wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When, when, when that gut start turning and, and that unction, you, you know something. May, listen. That's right. I would listen to my to, to to my gut and my discernment and my wife's discernment. There's a lot of people I wouldn't have did business with. Mm. That I would yeah. not be in a lot of the stuff that I'm in right now. If I'd have listened to that discernment back then, <laughs> instead of trying to convince myself that I should be pouring into certain people because my heart's so big. I should have just listened to, to yeah, what I heard. Yeah, that's me. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell myself <laughs> my, my own story. That's right. That's right. Thank y'all so much. Amen. Love it. God bless you. You too. Bye bye. Cool. So, um, I think that's going to be it for tonight. But, but I do want to encourage you all to come back on Mondays. Uh, at the very least, on Mondays, I'm going to open up for Q and A and financial game. And I'm going to allow God to lead me through my spirit about how else we want to serve. But um, that's my ministry. That, that, yes. that, 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 that is actually, I want to, um, uh, King uh, Spencer Spivey, the YouTuber who's been like talking about me lately. I want to, I want to thank you for allowing God to use you uh, because without those videos, I may have been lost in where I want to go. Yes. And, and honestly, the jarring of, of, of these videos has, has, has made me reawaken like, you ain't ministering enough. Mm. Right? Like, like that's my calling. That's my thing. And so just happy to get back into, um, you know, it may be corner classes. It may be money church. It may be a podcast. It may be just going live every day or whatever it is. But I know I have so much value to offer, um, you know, God's people. The ones he told me in 2012 to take care of, and he'll take care of me. So, and, 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 I'll, and that was our covenant. So in order for me to stay in covenant, I got to continue to do that. Well, I can't say like, oh, I did it for 10 years. So you know what? I'm good. Oh, I got some videos out there. So I'm good. That's why my YouTube channel been so dry. I ain't been teaching enough. Mm. I've been giving game enough. I've been pouring up enough. You know, I've had my head down working on the businesses, working on the operations, you know, working on um, these real estate developments, affordable housing. But that's not what God told me to do. I got to do that too now. Yes. But what he told me to do, the instruction, remember what I saw? God told, let me do a quick lesson real quick, Money Church. God told Saul to take over this town and kill everything moving. Right. Men, women, children, the lambs, the goats, the best of the beast, all of that. Yes. And then Saul listened to the people and they said, wait, don't kill the lambs. Don't kill the goats. These are good lambs, good goats. Mm -hmm. We can make them as an offering to God. Come on. Saul didn't want to disappoint the people and listen to them, didn't kill the lambs and the goats, then God made God angry and literally lost his throne. Yes, he did. Lost his favor with God by not listening to what God had instructed him to do. Yes, because whatever else sounded the wisdom. I have responsibility as a fund manager, responsibility as an entrepreneur, CEO, of these different companies. I have responsibility to execute that work, and I will do that work. That's the taking care of me side. But God can't take care of me through my other work if I don't stay committed to taking care of his people as he instructed me to do, as I agreed to do back in February 10th of yes. 2012. That's my journey. That just, that solves it all. So um, as you all go through different tests and challenges, adversity, obstacles, um, a lot of times we need these obstacles to 
bring us full circle and be able to hear God's voice. Um, what's this right here? What? Oh, okay. You're just talking. All right. Any last words, Bishop? <laughs> <laughs> like, right. Hallelujah. Uh, all I would really say is, even as you've spoken tonight about uh, getting back to the teaching, getting back to the part that you know uh, God is recharging you and reinforcing you in, uh, each and every one of us, you need to be able to locate what is the priority of your purpose. Mm. What, what is the, the first aspect of your, of your protocol to life. So keep that in mind. Make sure you don't remove yourself from the priority of your purpose. When you, when you get to the grave, when you finally die, I want to say to you, rob the grave. Make sure you left everything God wanted you to leave mm -hmm. on this earth to people, places, and things. Leave everything God gave you from creativity, your gifts, your ideas, all of those things. Leave them here. Rob the grave. Stay focused to what God has called you to be and stay aligned with your purpose. That would be something I release to you, would encourage you, hallelujah, to keep going forward and know that if you be about that, God will surely be about you. Yeah, this is something I'm going to share with my team this week because um, it always comes up, right? As my, as my influence brand grows, there's always a notion to follow marketing protocols, right? Mm -hmm. So what that says is if I'm Jay Morrison, the Jay Morrison, then when I want to do a free class, everybody says, no, you shouldn't be teaching for free. Mm -hmm. At this level of your brand, people should be paying you X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. right? Because that's protocol as you get certain influence, certain demands, certain, right. right? But there's a balance between that because we have entrepreneurial duties, but I have a purpose yeah. commitment yeah. to feed the people. Yes. So I can't maneuver like a guru. Actually, my hashtag back in the day was hashtag no guru because mm. that wasn't my thing. My thing wasn't about being a guru or being this personality or being so much as paid lecturer or whatever. It was just about being, when I, when I said young Malcolm, young Malcolm was about a heart and a spirit to feed people where they're at, to teach in the streets. Young Malcolm was my, my, my African, my black superhero to what mm. I first called Black Robin Hood. Yes. Black Robin Hood was me taking the game from the rich and giving it back mm, to the poor. That's good. And then one of my followers was saying, why you got to be a European superhero? Why can't you be a black superhero? And I said, okay, I'll be a Malcolm. Mm -hmm. But the essence of it is all the same. The essence was not about the monetization. It wasn't about the marketing strategies. It wasn't mm -hmm. about the funnels and the hacks. For me, it was about the heart. Yeah. It was about the service. Right. It was about, it literally was about the real give back this high level information mm -hmm. that I've had a, a blessing and a miracle of a life to, to be in these big rooms, to work for these big companies, to, to, to make big dollars early, lose big dollars, be in a financial positions, but then we get to comprehend it all and have a gift to be able to translate it back and teach it. Yes. And that gift, that faucet has to stay on. How That's good. Do? That's good. And it's real. And I think it's important for each person to know what is your game plan? What is God giving you as a part of your recipe to the earth? Mm, so when Jesus recipe. told his disciples, he said, freely ye have received, freely give. Which means if I have given unto you levels of knowledge, if I have opened up unto you realms of understanding, if I have given unto you insights and foresights, he says, then Jesus. the same way I freely gave it to you, Keep that in mind when I need you to freely give it unto others. Everything that God has given you should not always be for a price unto others. Mm. Please keep in mind, God gave his son. Hallelujah. That didn't cost you nothing. Salvation is free, but it wasn't, it wasn't cheap. Mm. It was free, but it wasn't cheap. So there's people who would be willing, like King Morrison, to give you knowledge. And when he's willing to give you that knowledge, I would say unto you, step right in line to receive it because what he received freely, God has now given him to give that away freely. And when the time comes that you need to buy wisdom and buy truth 
and by understanding, as we discussed earlier, Proverbs 23, 23, well, then that'll be the time you need to invest. But God will give you enough for you to understand what you should invest in. So this free information, this free teaching, the free knowledge that he's ready and willing to reimburse the community on and give those across the world this wisdom, well, then just know he's like giving you a free bag. After you get that free bag, now you got to be willing to pay to get more. That's the way I'm going to say it. That's a sample, <laughs> sample game, baby. It's a sample <laughs> game. And, and, and I just want y'all to know that, that you know, I, I try to consistently elevate and evolve my heart and my growth to make sure that you know that it's less and less about me and more and more about him. Yes. And that's the perspective I come from. And the miracle of I don't have I don't have perfect work, right? Like so if if you want to find mistakes on me, you can. They're there. I'm not a perfect man. So you, you could just plenty of mistakes to find on me. We can like I could tell you more you don't even know. I got I got a shitload of mistakes. Like, you know, we can have a list. But the mistakes, the failures, the obstacles, and all those things are part of my testimony yes. of who I am today. And who I am today is predicated on me finding a relationship with my father, with our father, yes. with the most high, and tapping in, even when I backslide, mm -hmm. tap back in, backslide, tap back in. But I want y'all to know, like, that's why I'm a miracle. Yeah. So whether you you know, whatever, I mean, I'm like a folktale out here. Like, they're like, Paul, Paul Bunyan chopped down 17 trees. Like, did Jay Morrison really chop down 17 trees? I'm like, I'm like a folk hero. So whether, whether you believe the folk hero or not, however level of it you do, at the end of the day, I'm still a miracle. I don't have no college education. I come from the hood and the trap for real. My dad taught me how to cook crack at 17 years old in a stove and a microwave. Like, I'm not supposed to be here at all. It's yeah. all a miracle. So I can understand why people don't, can't understand. Like, I don't understand them. I know you don't understand. Right. I get it. You can't understand a miracle. It's that amazing. Yeah. My miracle is that amazing. They can't figure me out. They can't understand it. Like, did he, I, I can't understand how he made millions. Where? Where? It was in my bank account. It was in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> like, you didn't make it. I did. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't understand it. What do you mean? You wasn't, you wasn't blowing the money fast. I was. You know what I'm saying? So um, just know that through all of that, it's been an amazing journey, an amazing you. ride. And I stand before you a, a miracle as That's your good. brother, a miracle gift to the community, um, and God's son. So anyway, we out Monday, Church Monday. See you all next week, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Tap on in. Not only are we covering spirituality around this, what we are going to be teaching and ministering and preaching is financial gospel, if you will, yes. um, to our people, because um, that's the root, that's the foundation of uh, God built me this way. Like, he made me this way. And so I'm going to use my gifts in the way that I'm instructed to use and the way that I agreed to use them. And we're going to do more of that. That's all. In real life. Peace. <laughs>